Good morning. Today we are going to continue our CPC review. And this uh, video will be going over the 20,000 series musculoskeletal, as well as the 30,000 uh, CPT series, which includes the respiratory system and cardiovascular system. All right, so when it comes to ICD-10 CM coding, um, laterality is going to be an important concept with this, and it is particularly prevalent in the musculoskeletal system. Typically, you will find that the right side is identified in the diagnosis code with the number one. The left is going to be identified with the number two, and bilateral conditions are generally identified with the number three. When laterality is not documented, the code is going to be billed as unspecified, Per our ICD-10 CM guidelines, if a bilateral option is not available for the diagnosis code, two codes will be reported, one for the right side and one for the left. Also from the ICD-10 CM guidelines, when the patient has a bilateral condition, the diagnosis is coded as bilateral, even if only one side is being treated at that specific encounter. Fracture guidelines. So fractures are going to be um, a very common uh, part within the musculoskeletal system. Um, fracture treatment will include the application and removal of a cast or traction device only. Subsequent replacement of a cast or traction device may require additional listing. Uh, when it comes to treatment, a closed fracture is when the surgical is not surgically exposed or open. So you cannot see the bone. Um, open, sorry, lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, fractures for um, closed um, fractures um, can sometimes be by manipulation and or casting. It's really going to depend upon uh, the severity um, or the type of fracture that it is. Open treatment involves surgically opening the fracture site and visually uh, repairing the site um, and examining the bone to repair that fracture. Pure cutaneous fixation is going to, going to involve the placing of pins through the skin into the bone to help stabilize the fracture side site. This type of treatment is neither or no, neither open or closed. Generally, the fixation pins are going to be placed across the fracture site using fluoroscopy. Um, and then um, another important guideline for fracture treatment is found in the guidelines at the beginning of the musculoskeletal section. Fracture treatment includes the application and removal of that first cast, like I said, as well as any subsequent uh, cast or traction devices uh, may be um, billable separately. And then one last note, manipulation is an attempt attempted reduction or restoration of a fracture to normal alignment by applied force. And then, and sometimes you may see a combination. So you may see an open treatment uh, where they used um, manipulation as well to help align the bone. But what you see a lot of is ORIF, which is your open reduction internal fixation. So that involves opening up the site um, reducing or manipulating the bone to help align it. And then they're putting um, some type of hardware um, to help hold that bone in place. Um, a lot of times we see this in fractures. We may see it in wrist, um, arms. It really just depends upon where that fracture site is. Um, I had a fractured ankle in 2018 and I actually have a, two screws and a plate on the inside of my left ankle and then um, just a plate on the out or two screws on the outside of my left ankle. So it was an open reduction and then an internal fixation because they it, I actually fractured it in two different places. And if you're gonna break a bone, might as well do it right. Another coding note, pay attention, pay very close attention um, to your fraction and dislocation sections, um, such as the treatment type and the bone being treated. A suggestion, circle or highlight the treatment type under every fracture and or dislocation section and then underline the specific bones. It's gonna make it a little bit easier when you're going to look at those codes to see uh, the type of treatment as well as the specific bone underneath that specific type of treatment. 
wound exploration. Um, these uh, codes relate to wounds resulting from some type of penetrating, penetrating trauma. The codes uh, describe surgical exploration and enlargement of the wound, extension of a dissection, debridement, removal of a foreign body, litigate, ligation, or coagulation of minor subcutaneous and or muscular blood vessels uh, of the subcutaneous tissue, muscle fascia, and or muscle, not requiring thoracotomy or laparotomy. Um, it, 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 these approaches are necessary. You're going to report those codes, not these. So you would go to thoracotomy or laparotomy and then look for the specific um, location in which that surgery is being done. Uh, wound repair is not separately reportable. So if they're doing some type of um, exploration to be able to cl the closing of that wound, uh, or repairing of that wound is going to be included in that exploration. Uh, another tip, if a repair is done to a major structure or major blood vessel requiring that thoracotomy or laparotomy, then those specific codes would supersede the use of, of your wound exploration codes. Also, you want to report repair of the wounds, simple, intermediate, or complex uh, repair use codes in the integumentary system section. So if this is a repair of a wound that is either simple, intermediate, or complex, you would then code it from the integumentary system. And make sure, again, you look at those guidelines that it defines what a simple, intermediate, or complex repair is. You can always go back and review the integumentary video as well. Trigger point injections. Uh, what is a trigger point? This is a painful knot of muscle that is tight and does not relax. Oh, we probably all experienced that. Codes are available for injections into those muscles with medication, which would be CPT codes 20552 and 20553, and without medication, 20560 and 20561. These codes are billed based on the number of muscles treated, not based on the number of injections given. So for example, if three injections are done into one muscle, we only bill for the treatment of one trigger point because the trigger point is the actual muscle that is being affected. It's not the actual medication itself. I hope that makes sense. Vertebroplasty. This is the injection um, of material into the vertebral body or rounded portion to help reinforce the structure. This is done under image guidance. So it's the repair of a vertebrae or the rounded portion of a segment that has been fractured. A bone cement is injected into the vertebra with under image guidance to help reinforce the structure. Similarly, vertebral augmentation is the process of cavity creation or lifting after a compression fracture of the spine. Um, however, prior to the injection of the cement, a verte the vertebrae are lifted and separated to help create a cavity in between those bones and place them back into normal anatomical position. The bone cement is injected into those vertebral bodies to help prevent a recurrent collapse. So the location of the vertebral body guide, uh, vertebral body guides are code selection. So dependent upon where that cement was placed um, is going to be the determination of your CPT code. So some keys to coding uh, for a vertebral plastic is going to include your number of levels, the location, image guidance, is not reported separately. It is included as part of a procedure and you cannot use a modifier 50. So these are important keys uh, to note uh, in billing for this. So do you wanna include the number of levels or segments being repaired and the specific portion of the spine? So is it cervical, thoracic, or lumbar? For the guidelines, imaging guidance is not separately billable. And for the code, the codes are not defined as unilateral or bilateral making modifier 50 not billable with these codes. Application of cast and strapping. So this is another part of fracture care. Um, if it is a replacement cast during um, follow-up or after care of a fracture, uh, those, sort of, those um, replacements may be billable. Uh, the first cast or traction device being placed is going to be included in the surgical service. Um, 
excuse me, um, um, casting materials um, can be found uh, in the HICPIX coding book. So casting or strapping may also be billed without the fracture treatment service if done to help stabilize or protect the fracture and or to provide a temporary relief to the patient. So sometimes when they put a patient in traction and that they're not always necessarily going to do surgery, they may be just trying to get it aligned so that the, uh, the bones are aligned and then the, uh, the healing process starts, that osseo ossification uh, starts to, um, to happen for those bones to start to heal. And then for endoscopy and arthroscopy, uh, many of these codes can be reported as arthroscopic or as an open service. So many of the joint repair services can be built as either one, an open incisional or an arthroscopic. Keywords in the operative report, such as scope or port placed, will alert the coder to an arthroscopic service. Further watch for parenthetical statements below the code that indicate when services are included in others. All right, question number five in your pretest. We have a 16 year old female who was hit by a car while crossing a two lane highway. She was taken to the hospital by ambulance. She was found to have an open wound of the left lower thigh just above the knee and a displaced fracture of the left femoral neck. So we have an open wound to the left thigh and we have a displaced fracture of the left femoral neck. She was taken to the operating room within four hours of her injury. She was given general endotracheal anesthesia and was prepped and draped in sterile fashion. So debridement, including excision of devitalized skin and muscle was performed on the lateral thigh. So that's the open wound. And the area was approximately 15 square centimeters. After the debridement and thorough copious irrigation, the wound was closed um, with a layer, sutures, and a dressing was applied and then covered with adhesive plastic. The patient was then prepped and draped for the fracture and turned on her right side. Uh, we all re-scrubbed, eight inch incision was made over the left hip and the head of the femur was exposed, multiple fragments from the neck and the greater tuberosity was removed. The decision was made to replace the femoral head. The femur was removed from the acetabellum and the femoral head was removed. The femoral canal was re-aimed re and the prosthesis was placed. It was, then, it was then placed in the acetabellum and a good fit of the capsule was closed. The wound was closed. The patient was sent to recovery in good condition. So what are our CPT codes here? We, the answer was C. We have 27236 with an LT modifier and then 11043 with the 59 modifier. So the fracture, um, the, the femoral head replacement would be coded first followed by the um, wound repair. I need to, I'd like to tell you it's kind of. All right. So if we review here, we look at um, a breakdown of the codes. Uh, so what is the approach? Was it open, closed, or percutaneous? What was the laterality? Uh, there was debridement of the open fracture of the skin. Uh, we had multiple procedures provided in the same or different location, um, making sure we don't want to share any bundled components of a global surgical package. So our first CPT code uh, for fracture of the femur uh, neck open treatment. Uh, we had CPT code. Um, and then for the debridement, we had either debridement or skin debridement. So that, again, left us with answers, answers 27236 and 11043. All right, so our next question. Preoperative diagnosis, painful hardware, left foot. Post-op diagnosis is going to be the same. Procedure performed was removal of hardware, excuse me, of the left foot. Indications for procedure, the patient is status post metatarsal fracture treated with internal fixation. Patient has suffered pain due to the hardware for the past six months. And so due to that, they have chosen, um, elected to do surgery to remove the hardware. And this happens sometimes with patients after a fracture. 
So as we're reading through the description of the pr um, procedure, we see here a small 0 0.5 centimeter incision through the skin were made and a blunt dissection was carried down to the screw heads. The screws were removed with the screwdrivers. An incision was, the incision was irrigated and closed with a simple 4-0 nylon suture. A sterile compression dressing was applied. The patient was taken to recovery room in satisfactory condition. So your answer for this one would have been D. Procedure code 20680 with the T84.84XA and G89.18. So when we look at the guideline, uh, IC19B3B, post-operative pain associated with specific post-operative compl complication or post-operative pain associated with a specific post-operative compl complication such as pain for, painful wire suture is assigned to the appropriate codes found in chapter 19. If appropriate, use additional code from category G89 to identify the acute or chronic pain. So we have pain, fixation internal, T84.84, pain due to internal orthopedic prosthetic devices, implants, and graft, pain post-procedural. We have 20670 through 20680 for the removal or of a fixation device. Um, and then it gives all of the indications of the different um, description of the procedure. All right, so that is all for um, the musculoskeletal system. So now we are going to get started on the 30,000 series uh, for the respiratory, hemic, lymphatic, mediastinum, diaphragm, and cardiovascular system. So some rules um, and guidelines for um, this uh, 30,000 series. Uh, there's going to be some overarching guidelines for the respiratory system. As with all CPT codes, be careful to review all of the parenthetical statements throughout your chapter. There are specific guidelines regarding specific use of codes found in the parenthetical statements. Most of the codes in the respiratory section are considered unilateral, unless specifically noted as unilateral or bilateral. Make note of those specific codes throughout the book. If the code is not specified as unilateral or bilateral, it is going to be assumed to be unilateral. To report it as bilateral, append modifier 50 um, to the code. So for our respiratory procedures, we want to progress downward from the head to the throat thorax. Um, our parenthetical statements are going to give us directions on how to use those specific codes. So we want to apply those codes above the parenthetical note. Uh, uh, those apply to the codes above the parenthetical note, not below. And most codes, again, in this section for respiratory are going to be unilateral. If they are bilateral, use your modifier 50 to indicate, unless your code descriptor states that it is bilateral. For the lungs and pleura, all transplants have three parts to them. There's the harvest, the back bench, and the insertion. Harvesting includes the removal of the lung from a donor and cold preservation of the organ prior to transplant. Most lungs come from the cadaver donor, but rarely a lung can be taken from a human donor instead. Back bench is going to be the work done by a different provider who prepares the organ for the transplantation, including examining it, for abnormalities or injuries. And residual tissue from the donor is removed from the organ with particular attention paid to the vessel that will be attached to the transplant recipient. And then finally, the new organ is placed in the recipient. So live donors are rare and only one lobe can be donated. Uh, cadaver donors are going to be the most commonly used. So another coding tip, note unilateral versus bilateral and services with or without cardiopulmonary bypass assistance. Under pulmonary for ventilator management, or these are considered other procedures of ventilator management, spirometry, pulmonary capacity study, respiratory flow studies, pulmonary stress testing, inhalation treatment, oxygen uptake, and pulse oximetry. Uh, in the medicine section of the CPT, there are going to be specific codes related to the pulmonary section. 
So our uh, ventilators are going to be machines that use to assist with breathing, usually in a patient that cannot breathe on their own. This could be due to a trauma or even following surgery. The specialist or a pulmonologist or an intern intensivist generally will manage those ventilator settings. Barometry in, uh, measures inhalation and exhalation and is very helpful in managing asthma. Other pulmonary testing is used to help evaluate specific aspects of breathing. In most instances, these tests are administered by a pulmonary technician and interpreted by a physician. A physician specializing in respiratory care, like the talk said earlier, is a pulmonologist. And when based in a hospital or intensive care unit, the specialist may be an intensivist. So under our coronary arteries and blood vessels, remembering our arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart and out to the rest of the body, where our veins carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart from the capillary beds. There is one um, set of exceptions in the body. Our pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood away from the heart and out to the lung and the pulmonary vein carries the oxygenated blood back to the heart from the lungs to be pumped out into the rest of the body. So that's where we see that one set of exceptions. And then our capillaries are what help connect our arteries and our veins together. Just a little terminology reminder. So when it comes to pulmonary circulation, we do have five circulation systems in the body. Two of them are going to be discussed right here. One is our pulmonary circulation system, which pushes the blood from the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve out to the pulmonary artery to take deoxygenated blood to the lungs to drop off carbon dioxide and pick up the oxygen. So it's kind of like a, a ride share station. Uh, blood is then returned to the heart through the pulmonary vein and returned oxygenated blood to the left atrium. And then our systemic circulation, this is where the uh, is the next phase of blood circulation when the oxygenated blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle. It then moves from the left ventricle out through the aorta to the rest of the body. I just love how the circulatory system works. Um, so cardiology coding is going to use codes from three different sections of our CPT uh, manual. It would be our surgical coding, radiology coding, and medicine coding. So, of course, there's the surgical section where the, the, the actual um, procedure or, or surgery itself for the cardiovascular system. Then we have the radiologist radiology section, which is going to include radiology um, imaging or guidance on the heart for the vascular system, uh, diagnostic ultrasounds. Uh, radiological guidance, as well as your nuclear medicine procedures. And then in the medicine section, we're going to see things related to cardiovascular, as well as our non-invasive vascular diagnostic studies. So when it comes to our pacemakers and defibrillators, um, pacemaking system, um, there are pacing cardio defibrillator systems, so to code these type of systems, um, you need to know the type of system, whether the placement is temporary or permanent, whether the device is a single, dual, multiple, or leadless, uh, the placement of the electrodes, was it transvenous, endoscopic for an epicardial placement, uh, epicardial or coronary sinus, uh, the type of procedure being performed, such as a removal, a replacement, um, and then components removed, replaced, or inserted. So pulse generators, leads, and was this done all at once or individually? So our cardiac muscle contractions are not under voluntary control. Our heart rate is regulated by a natural pacemaker. We have a natural pacemaker comprised of spe special cardiac muscle fiber under control of the audit autonomic involuntary nervous system. In the case of an artificial pacemaker, it, refused, it refers to an artificial or man-made system to help regulate the rate of the activity. A pacing cardioverter defibrillator system is a man-made device placed to the chest to monitor heart rhythm and detect irregular heartbeats. In the case of an irregular heartbeat, the ICD-10 will deliver a look. The ICD is referring to um, 
I just lost my totally train of thought. The um, cardiac defibrillator, sorry. Yeah, internal cardiac defibrillator uh, will deliver an electric shock to the heart to help fix that abnormal heart rhythm. To code either the pacemaker system or an ICD system, coders must know the information presented that is on the slide that you see and stuff. And a lot of times um, people think that defibrillators of that are used to restart the heart. That is not what a defibrillator does. Even in CPR, that is not what a defibrillator does. What the, 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 the defibrillator is doing is picking up and looking for an irregular heartbeat. And when we shock a patient in CPR, we're shocking them to get that rhythm back into a normal sinus rhythm. It, if it does not detect a heartbeat, that means there is no heartbeat, it is not gonna have us shock the patient. So it is not used to restart the heart. Uh, we also need to know, so is this what type of a pacemaker, the type of procedure, the amount of leads, the placement, and the approach. And this is what you would want to put um, as a note in your CPT when it comes to pacemakers and defibrillators. Write, write yourself in the note somewhere, put, um, ask myself these questions before coding this. What type of pacemaker is it? What type of procedure was done? How many leads? Where was, how was it placed? And what was the approach used? So, all right. Coronary artery bypass graphing, also known as cabbage, has three sets of codes. So we have, it's based on material use. Uh, so is it a vein only, an artery only, or artery and vein? Add a note in your books with code 33510 to 33516. Do not bill with 33533 through 33536. So our coronary arteries are critical to the function of our heart. Coronary arteries arise from the aorta and are small vessels feeding oxygen and nutrients to the myocardium. Each coronary artery has a specific name. The three most common are going to be our left anterior descending or LD, our right coronary RC and left circumflex LC. One of the treatments for a blocked coronary artery is bypassing the blockages in the vessels with grafted vessels called a cabbage for your coronary artery bypass graft, arterial and venous to help restore blood flow. So if you've ever seen a patient, if you, or somebody, or maybe you've known somebody in your family, they may have had a large artery, um, um, or the uh, venous artery or arterial artery removed from maybe their leg. And what they've done is they've used that as a bypass within the heart to help improve the blood flow. So there are only the three si uh, sets of codes that are used for a cabot, which report the type of material used and the number of bypasses done with the material. So this is where our documentation plays that key role. You know, what was the number of bypasses done and what was the type of material that was used? And you also wanna make sure you pay attention um, to these add-on codes for our cabbage. There are numerous that may be billed with those services. Most of the add-on codes are related to the harvesting of the vessel from other parts of the body to be used as a graph material. In addition to the harvesting codes, providers may also perform a coronary endarterectomy. This is a procedure to remove diseased material and plaque from the outside of an artery to restore normal blood flow through the artery. Um, if a cabbage is performed more than one month after a previous cabbage or valve procedure, a reoperation re code should be appended to the cabbage procedure. And that would be add on code 33530, reoperation, cabbage, or valve procedure more than one month after the original operation, like we see here on the screen. Um, so, so, our non coronary vessel, this could be our vein, vein in situ, which is the vein is left in the native location or other than a vein, and then code by type and location. So there are other bypass graph codes in our CPT. These procedures um, restore blood flow to several body areas other than the coronary vessel. So this code selection is made by the type of graft and the location. 
Type includes autograft, which is tissue or organ transferred by grafting into a new position in the body of the same individual using a vein or an artery. And then synonyms including autogenous and autologous synthetic and synthetic grafts may also be used. Uh, our central venous access devices or CVAD, these are placed for frequent access to the bloodstream. So you have a patient who is having lots of blood work done. Uh, this can help eliminate having to poke them all the time uh, with a needle. Um, so per the guideline, to be a central venous access device, the tip of the catheter must terminate in the subclavian artery, innominate or innominate or brachiocephalic artery, the iliac artery, or either the superior or inferior vena cava. These are codes for the type of procedure, whether catheter was tunneled or not whether there was a port or a pump use, and the age of the patient. A tunneled catheter is inserted in advance to its final port. A non-tunneled is through a short track, which is from the skin entry site directly into the point of cannulization. There is a CVAP, um, Central Venous Access Procedures Table, in your CPT manual that can help make um, determining your correct CPT code much easier. Uh, vascular injection procedures. Um, interventional cardiology and radiology is a branch of medicine which uses minimally invasive techniques to diagnose and treat diseases. Using fluoroscopic ultrasound or other guidance, a catheter is threaded into vessels to help perform this procedure. Um, so these are um, considered selective catheterization, and they should be coded to the highest level access within the vascular family um, or deepest. Any branches that the physician must pass through to get to the final destination is not coded. Any additional branches that are investigated are separately reportable. So it says here, any addi additional second or third order arterial catheterization within the vascular family of arteries or veins supplied by a single first order should be coded. There are numerous rules for your vascular injections and appendix L additionally is used extensively for coding this section. So I would become very familiar with your uh, appendix L if you are coding for cardiovascular. Um, hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is filtration of the blood to replace the vital functions of the kidney when the patient's kidneys are no longer fully functioning. It requires access to circulation, which can involve a cannula, arteriovenous anastomosis, or a fistula or shunt. Um, so for hemi hemodialysis, CPT codes 36800 through 36815. Uh, portal decompression, CPT codes 37140 for 37183, treats hypertension, hypertension or occlusion of a portal vein um, due to hepatic venous outflow obstruction. A transjugular intra, intrahepatic portosomatic shunt is a percutaneously created connection within the liver between the portal and the systemic circulation. So what it does, it diverts blood from the portal vein to the hepatic vein. And then transcatheter procedures, uh, removal of a clot um, for arterial or venous thrombectomy um, and other catheter procedures that are very specific, such as insertion and removal of a vena cava filter, embolization of tumors or fibroids, and stent placement as well. And then we have endovascular revascularization. This is used to treat uh, occlusive diseases in the lower extremity. They can be, uh, this can be done, uh, can be performed open or percutaneously uh, to, to treat those occlusive diseases. There are four treatments that can be performed as indicated on the slide. Um, treatments may be done in three different vascular territories, iliac, femoral, popliteal, and tibial peroneal. Guidelines are extensive regarding the different territories and how to apply the CPT and the associated add-on codes. So your codes are going to be arranged in a hierarchy for each territory. So stent placement with arthrectomy has the highest. 
uh, territory uh, or hierarchy. Then we have stent placement, atherectomy, and then angioplasty, which has the lowest. So that tells you how you would sequence them. The stent placement would be placed with atherectomy first, stent placement, then atherectomy, and then angioplasty. What is bundled into, into our endovascular revascularization? Uh, according to our guidelines, there may, many, be, there may there are many services that are going to be bundled into this service performance, such as our vascular access, catheter placement, transversing the lesion, any imaging related to the intervention, uh, the use of an embolic protection device, imaging for the closure of the device placement, as well as closure of the access site. Throughout our CPT, there are going to be instructions for the use of diagnostic angiography. Uh, it, some angiography may be separately reportable if it is performed at the time other than during an intervention or surgical service. It, it, if it is defined as part of the intervention description, it is not separately reportable. There are also uh, many numerous listings in the medicine section related to cardiology. Among services found here include cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR, and cardioversion during which a shock is administered to the heart to convert an abnormal heart rhythm into a normal one. So here we see uh, all that is part of this, also could be included as part of our cardiovascular medicine section. So therapeutic services and procedure, cardiography, uh, cardiovascular monitoring, implantable um, wearable cardiac device evaluations, such as a 24 hour heart monitor, uh, echocardiography, so, so the ultrasound of the heart, uh, cardiac catheterizations, uh, peripheral arterial disease rehabilitation, and non-invasive physiological studies and procedures as well. Uh, some percutaneous coronary interventions. Um, for this, modifier 59 is not used to identify separate sites here. Separate sites are identified by the use of the site-specific modifiers LD for left circumflex and its marginal branches, left on uh, anterior descending or LD and its diagnostic diagonal branches, and then RC for right coronary and its post posterior lateral and posterior descending branches. So all interventions must identify the artery and the branch being touched using either LC, LD, or RC. And again, this is something you should put in the medicine section under your percutaneous coronary interventions as a reminder to use one of these three modifiers and not modifier 59. So each branch, LD, LC, or RC is reported on as its own intervention. The add-on code must match and share the same modifier as the primary. So an example here would be stent replaced in the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. So 92928 and an LD modifier to indicate the left anterior descending and then 92928 to indicate the left circumflex. And then stents were placed in the left anterior descending and its first diagonal. And again, 92928 LD and 92929 LD, because that would be an add on code. And then for ECG or electrocardiograms and stress testing, um, the key components for code selection include the type of procedure, such as with interpretation and report, tracing only, interpretation and report only. So the codes for ECG and stress testing include both the professional and technical concept concepts already. So you will not use a TC or a 26 modifier. So for our global, the tech and professional, uh, ECG with at least 12 leads, 93000, uh, cardiovascular stress test, and then rhythm ECG one to three leads, uh, you see for both the technical and professional component, supervision, supervision only, technical only, and then professional only. But if your office or your cardiologist, cardiovascular, whatever, owns the material, the, the um, equipment and is doing the interpretation, 
then it would be the 93,000. And then our cardiac catheterization. Uh, most common access point is going to be our femoral artery. There are two code families for cardiac catheterization, congenital heart disease, and all other conditions. So catheter insertion, injection, and imaging are combined for one code for all other conditions, but separately billable for congenital conditions. And wonderful table here. I always recommend marking these tables and when you see them in your CPT book, because they are going to be so, so helpful. So for cardiac catheterization, for congenital conditions, bill your injection separately. So you see, you see the um, column for our congenital conditions. So for the right heart, it gives you the CPT code combined, combined with transeptual puncture, and then combined with existing hole. So again, your documentation, the side of the heart, what exactly is being done, this is going to help you choose that correct CPT code for that cardiac catheterization. All right, so more of our pretest questions. Question number seven, intracoronary stents are placed percutaneously in the right coronary and left interior descending artery. For our 68-year-old patient who has acute ST elevation myocardial infarction, they had an ME, an MI uh, one week ago. Percutaneous transluminal balloon angioplasty is performed on the left circumflex coronary artery. So our correct answer for this one is A. We have 92928 for RC for the right circumflex. Um, 92928. For our LD, for our left anterior, uh, our left anterior descending artery, and the 92920 for LC for our left uh, circumflex. And then an ICD ICD 10 CM code I21.3 for the acute ST elevation myocardial infarction. So here we see the guidelines when it comes to our major coronary arteries and then take um, the guidelines for choosing um, that um, angioplasty. That is it for our 20,000 and 30,000 series. Um, I hope you enjoyed this.